So I'm about to top morning buns, but I found a pastry bag with good icing prepared yesterday. Uh, kind of a strange state in the, in the low boy, so I'm trying to fix that really quickly. Um, and it kind of makes me be confronted with the, with a weakness, and that's we we need to kind of reconvene around details. Um, so many details go into mixing this sourdough batch that's right here in this mixer right now. We've got flour and water coming together in an auto lease, which you don't see everybody taking the time to do auto leases. It's usually something that's just omitted in baking, but we know the science behind it and we know why we want to do it. Um, the thing is, it's just as important to teach other like fundamentals, uh, which, which I have not. So the current situation with pastry bag technique at Proof is using the same tie wraps that are closing up like English muffins in a plastic bag and hoping that this stuff doesn't backflow. So I'm basically going to try to move all this spillage forward into the pastry bag to create a gap. The bag's big enough. I don't need to fill it. I mean, it is a reusable, or it's, it's a disposable pastry bag, so it's not, I'm not going to like invest too heavily into it, but I'm certainly going to get the rest of this filling out. And, you know, to do so, I need to actually tie up the back fully. So I, don't, I can just tie it up completely, and now I don't have to worry about that anymore. And we'll see if I can squeak out enough of this. I'm going to have to be somewhat conservative. The other thing about pastry bag technique is you're supposed to basically twist to create tension, and then you should, you should just be able to apply two fingers on the actual filling, because the assumption is that Pastry filling is oftentimes temperature sensitive, so when you are dealing with a pastry bag like this properly, and I'm no expert really, I'm, like I said, this is a weakness of mine, uh, but you're, you're not supposed to heat up the contents of uh, the pastry bag itself. If there was an area that I would want to invest myself in, it's just uh, spending a little bit more time with uh, with bakers that specialize in patisserie or just like fine pastry uh, because our croissants are you know a bread version of a pastry that get very technical and as we advance forward we're playing with more and more and more technique that really bridges beyond bread making and into more traditional pastry. It's definitely an area where our team uh, can excel a little bit more in the future. So I'm just trying to squeeze out the remnants of this bag right now. There's not much in it. And I might need to prepare some more icing. So given that my goal is to get get pastries out to the front right now, I want to finish up at least this one tray and that way the front of house has morning buns to start the day. We just like to give them a tiny sprinkle of powdered sugar, very light dusting, just like the contrast that it provides visually. I'm going to carry this tray up to the front and then basically move on to topping danishes. Uh, I might need to prepare some more morning bun or some more morning bun icing to finish these, so we'll we'll check in a minute. So now moving on to danishes. Basically, we made a variation of this on our Danish. This is a blueberry filling, uh, and I'm basically going to put a small scoop of it in, and then top it with some fresh blueberries. These will go back in the oven for a couple minutes to just set and finish uh, coloring. 
uh, and then I'll top them with a special icing that we have for them. This scoop is far too big for the project at hand. I'm going to go swap it out. I'll be right back. So I'm just going to go around and fill the group of these. And while doing so, comment on the fact that what I'm not doing here is stopping in between each one and finishing it. So I'm not going, you know, uh, and, and that's, this one's a very obvious example uh, of batching. Anyone can sort of see that it's more efficient for me to top all of these par-baked uh, Danish forms with this uh, blueberry jam before I proceed to add the fresh blueberries. I'm, I'm going to have a much more uh, efficient process that way. But other times when the tasks are longer uh, or more complicated around the bakery, it's not quite as obvious that you should batch one of each type of task. That's just a good general rule when working in a uh, production environment um, is to try to limit your actions to uh, the fewest possible changes at a time. I don't think enough people are, have these honest conversations with themselves as they're trying to build their craft. If you want to be more successful in whatever it is that you're doing, baking is just an example of this, um, you're going to have, and, and if your success is based on the production of products, then yes, you can raise your prices in order to produce less products to a certain extent, but at a certain point, the difference between your financial success and or lack thereof is your willingness to make more of your products. I don't think enough people have the conversation of, well, what does it actually take to make more of your products? Uh, you know, we, we often get wrapped up in just the making of the products. And I think a lot of people watching this channel have no interest in, you know, baking professionally, and that's great. Uh, but, but chances are that somewhere in your life you can sort of relate to the same exact uh, set of problems, and that's we often have to do more of something than uh, we would choose to do otherwise, even if we're passionate about it. Um, you know, like, I don't need to make hundreds and hundreds of pan chocolat for myself and my family. I need to make hundreds and hundreds of them to support this entire endeavor. And, and now, you know, where we're at, I actually need to make thousands of them. Um, so one of the sort of difficulties is just um, realizing that over time, efficiency must take a very front and center uh, position, even if you're a creative person. Normally, even the pace that I'm operating right now uh, would be like if everybody around here just went on talking for hours and, you know, casually did things in the background while they talked, we would not, you know, be a business. Fortunately, maybe I can do that once in a while. <laughs> if, if enough of you come over here uh, and enjoy what we're doing as a result, uh, which that's been a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited to get an opportunity to capture now that we're past our grand opening is just more encounters, you know, that happen between between us, like between those of you watching and us here in the flesh. Um, and at times we're going to catch that probably on camera too. Um, it's just been really interesting to meet some of you uh, here in this setting where where sort of this... Uh, you, know, you can you can watch us bake all day, but it's definitely different being being here in the flesh. Uh, Had some really interesting conversations with other people in all kinds of walks of life. Um, 
bakers and non-bakers alike, uh, people that, you know, watch for this reason or that. Uh, and it's sort of interesting just to uh, start to be able to uh, experience this this community in a different context than just, you know, responding to comments on occasionally or whatever. Um, I, I love that about our new bakery is that uh, if you find yourself in Phoenix, it's probably a worthy place to spend a little bit of time. I, I think it's it's nice in here. Uh, the ambiance nice, and if you like if you like watching us bake anyway, you're probably going to enjoy watching us bake right across the counter. So now I have these fresh blueberries on these, uh, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to go tray by tray and get them get them topped. Once I do, I can pop them back in the oven. So I'm going to check. Uh, to make sure that my oven is warming. And I'm just going to keep them in there for four to five minutes, enough to heat the filling, uh, the, the blueberry jam, uh, enough where when it cools down, it will reset and it will reset itself around these fresh blueberries uh, and be really flavorful. Uh, jams are on their own concentrated typically and very flavorful but with blueberries in particular we really love the combination thereof of uh, of having fresh and jammed blueberries on a on a pastry what's really interesting is we're gonna switch from blueberries to meat uh, so after I get these in the oven I'm gonna wash up and switch to the other half of these pastries, which will be topped with uh, they will not be topped with uh, wow <laughs> I topped all of them with blueberry, so we're going to have blueberry danishes all day uh, and then the, the meat ones will come out later when we bake pastries again at this point I can't convert them, so that's okay uh, too efficient, too much on autopilot. But I mean, to the point of efficiency, it is easier to work when you are repeating the same step because you can um, you can kind of get to that position like riding a bike or operating a car where you're engaged, but it just feels like a very natural activity. Uh, and as a result, like just seemingly doing it, you can get in the zone. Although you can also get too far in the zone where uh, if you're not paying attention, you need to make a change, like change from you know one flavor to the next. You can see here how that, that can go down in real time too. But such is life. Like we'll have more blueberry today and less, less of the savories.